I'm Cabana, and I'll be teaching you our lesson four. So there's going to be some hearts over here, and pause the video and see how many you can count. There are ten hearts. So if you look at our treasure map poster for today at Jellyfish Lagoon, there's a heart. And that stands for God is love. God is not just loving, God is love. And all love is from God. So we're going to open up to 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 through 8. And that's going to tell us about God's love. Okay. 1 John chapter 4, 7 through 8. Beloved, let us love one another, for God is love, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. It is not love who does not know God, for God is love. And that's what our medallion for today is, love. Isn't it incredible to think that God who made the universe actually loves us? And not only does he love us, but he also wants to have a relationship with each one of us so we can get to know him now and live with him someday in heaven. You see, even though God is great and holy and majestic, he hasn't forgotten about us. He knows each one of us, he cares about us, loves us, and wants us to be his children. But you may have wondered, how can we be his children and get to heaven someday? Do you think it's by being really good? Well, no, it isn't. So let's track down some clues and get how we can get about how we can get to heaven. Our clues have to do with who, what, and where. You can see on their poster, who, what, and where. Okay, so get a piece of paper and draw on it. It's going to be a grid like this with three boxes off to the side. First, let's look at a lineup of suspects and see who was against God. The first two suspects lived a long time ago, about 6,000 years ago. They were the first people and they lived in a beautiful garden. Write down their names if you know who they were. Our next suspect was known as the most famous pirate of all time. Arr. He had a beard and it said that he would light his hair on fire to make it smoke under his hat so he would, he would appear especially fierce to those he was going to rob. His name starts with a B. Remember, he has a beard. Write, that, write those two down on your paper if you know who they are. Our ne next suspect was a prophet. He's the prophet we talked about two days ago who ended up in the belly of a big fish. Our next suspect was also a prophet, the one we talked about yesterday who saw the vision of God on the throne. His name starts with an I. There's one more box, we're going to leave that blank for now. So draw, and draw a star next to each one you've correctly identified when I give you the answer. Box one was Adam and Eve. You can see, there's Adam and Eve. Box two was Blackbeard the Pirate. Box three was Jonah. And box four was Isaiah. Now we're going to try to answer the question of what. What did they do wrong against God? Let's go back to our first suspects, Adam and Eve. They were the first two people on the earth. If you think you know what they did wrong against God, draw a quick sketch of the item it has to do with. Our next suspect is Blackbeard the pirate. What did pirates do wrong? Draw a quick sketch or write a couple words of something they did wrong. The next suspect was Jonah, the prophet who saw God on the throne in the vision. Let me read from the Bible what his response was after he saw the vision of God on the throne. And then you can draw a quick sketch or write a couple of words to think what to write a couple of words to describe it. Okay. So we're going to we're going to read in Isaiah verse chapter six, verse five. He said so I said Woe is me, for I am done, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King and the, the Lord of hosts. So write down what you think that Isaiah did wrong with. And that brings us to our last box in this section. Let's leave it blank for right now, but let's see if you figured out what each deed, what deed each one committed against God. Draw a star next to each one you got right. 
Box one with Adam and Eve suspects was eating forbidden fruit. Box two with Blackbeard as a suspect was stealing stuff. Box, box three, three with Jonah as the suspect was running away from God. In box four, with Isaiah as the suspect was having unclean lips. The last question we're trying to answer is where? Where did they do their wrong deeds against God? In the first box, where Adam and Eve, right where Adam and Eve lived, that's where they committed their wrong deed. In the second box, right where Blackbeard the pirate did his stealing. In the third box, right the interesting, slimy place Jonah ended up when he disobeyed God and ran away. In the fourth box, right where building the Isaiah saw in his vision. And leave the fifth box blank for now. So here are the answers. Then draw the star next to each one you got right. In the first box, you should have said the Garden of Eden. In the second box, you should have said a pirate ship or out at sea. In the third box, you should have said in the, in the belly of a whale. So that's where Jonah was. In the fourth box, you should have said in a temple. So that's where Isaiah saw his dream. We're trying to figure out how to get to heaven from these clues. So let's look at each suspect and what they did wrong to see who was against God. To begin, let's look at our first box in each row. We've got Adam and Eve with the fruit in the garden as described as in Genesis 1 through 3. Do you think Adam and Eve acted against God by eating their fruit? Yes, they did. That was an act of disobedience because God specifically told them not to do that. Anytime you disobey God, it's called sin. Now let's look at the second set of boxes. We've got Blackbeard the pirate with stolen stuff and in the pirate ship. Do you think Blackbeard the pirate acted against God by stealing stuff? Yes, stealing is forbidden in the Bible for it says in Exodus, so that's an act of disobedience or sin. God is kind and cares for us, so he wants us to be kind for others too, not to go around taking things that don't belong to us. The Bible tells us to work so we can provide for ourselves, our families, and others. In Ephesians 4, 28, it says, Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let his labor, working with his hands, what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. Now let's look at the third set of boxes. We've got Jonah running away and ending up in the sea. Do you think he acted against God? God told him to go to Nineveh, but he went the other way, so that was sin because he did not obey God. In Deuteronomy 11.1 it says, Therefore you shall love the Lord your God and keep his charge, his statutes, his judgments, and his commandments always. Now let's look at the fourth set. We've got Isaiah with unclean lips in the temple. Yes, speaking things with your lips that aren't pleasing to God is a sin. We don't know what Isaiah is referring to exactly when he said his lips were unclean. But there are many ways we can sin with the words we say from our lips. God is always truthful and he never lies. But perhaps Isaiah lied. God is always kind. Perhaps Isaiah said something unkind or mean. All these and many more are ways we sin with our lips. So now we have established that all our suspects sinned or disobeyed God's commandments. But did you know that the Bible tells us in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So that means we all sin, every single one of us. That means that even, even you need to be placed in that line of suspects because you sin. So in the last box in the who section, write your name and draw your face. We left these ones blank because that's where you're going to write yours. Okay, so here's a question. Of the five suspects, including you, whose sin seemed the worst? Take a minute to discuss which one with your parents or whoever's sitting next to you. Circle any that you think sinned so bad that they can't go to heaven. The answer is they all sinned at least one time in their lives so they all can't go to heaven on their own works. 
You see, since God is holy and perfect, he can't allow even one sin in heaven. That means if a person sins even once, he's considered as guilty as someone who sins a ton of times. It doesn't matter if it's Blackbeard the pirate or you. Each person has sinned against God, and this is a serious situation. From the beginning, when Adam and Eve sinned against God, until today, each one of us disobeys God. It may not be by stealing stuff like Blackbeard, but it may be by saying something with our lips that we shouldn't, like lying or saying something unkind, like Isaiah. Or maybe it's hiding from our parents or going the other way when they call us, like Jonah did with God. Think about your sin you've done at some point in your life and draw a quick sketch or write a few words about it in the last box in the what section. Maybe it's making fun of someone or punching your brother or complaining about something or saying a bad word or any number of things. Now in the bottom box, draw where you were when you committed that sin. Our sin causes a huge problem for us because God is holy and always must punish sin. And listen to this. The Bible says to us in Romans 6.23, the wages or payment of sin is death. Sin separates us from God for all of eternity. Those who stay in their sins are not part of God's family and won't go to heaven when, when they die, but will instead go to a terrible place called hell. But because God loves us so much, he came to earth to rescue us from this predicament about 2,000 years ago. The amazing, almighty God, who is so much greater and better than you can ever imagine, who lived in heaven and decided to leave heaven, came to earth in the form of a baby. So draw a baby in one of those three big boxes that you drew on your paper. His name was Jesus. God now was on earth and was with us. That's what the word Emmanuel means. God with us. Jesus is God, God the Son. This is a mystery, but it's true. And it's great news because it means we can know the mighty God. God didn't just leave us to our sinful selves. He sent his Son so we might know him personally and be saved from our sins. In the, third, in the second box, draw a cross. When Jesus came to earth, he lived a perfect life, never sinning and even once. He was holy, like we learned from God. He is the only one who ever lived perfectly. Every other person sins. At the end of his life, some wicked men put him to death on a cross. This was a very painful death. But Jesus willingly died so he could take the punishment for sin that we deserved. In Romans 5, 8, our memory verse today, it says, But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let's pretend that I'm a pirate who stole someone's money. But instead of me going to jail for the crime, an innocent man goes to jail in place of me. Wouldn't that be amazingly kind of that innocent man? That's the kind of love that Jesus shows for us. None of us is innocent. We all sin against God and deserve to be punished. But Jesus died on the cross to take punishment we deserve so we can be forgiven and become children of God. If we trust in Jesus, what Jesus did, rather than trying to earn God's forgiveness. In the very third box, right, he's alive. After Jesus died, something amazing happened. He came back to life. Of course, we know nothing is too hard for God. For in Jeremiah 32, 27, it says, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Even coming back to life isn't too hard for him. This shows us with one more way that Jesus is God. It's amazing to think that God loves us so much that God the Son came to earth and died to take the punishment we deserve for all the sins we've done. He did this so that we can become part of his forever family. For you aren't automatically his child, only if you sincerely receive Jesus as your savior. If you're interested in becoming a child of God, you need to pray to him, talk to him. I have some examples for you of what you can do. Okay, you gotta guess what this word is. So, this one, you have sad minus s, so add, plus mitten minus n, so admit. Okay, that's the first step, admit. It means that you need to first admit to God that you're a sinner and that you're sorry for the wrong you've done against him. When you see your sin is against a holy God, you should turn away from your sin, repent, and turn towards God. And what's the next word? 
Okay, let's see. So we have a B plus some leaves minus S. So take a minute, think about what that is. It's belief. You must believe that Jesus is God and came to earth, lived a perfect life, died a terrible death and on the cross to take punishment for your sin, and then came back to life. Admit, believe, and here's the third set of words. Four, E, plus ver, and then tree minus T, plus seal minus L, plus V. This one is forever receive. Once you admit you're a sinner, want to turn away from your sin by repenting, and believe that Jesus died and came back to take the, the punishment for your sin, you can become a child of God. If you sincerely believe this, you will forever receive him in your, into your life, and you'll be part of God's family for all eternity. This is the most important and wonderful thing that can ever happen to you. It's better than finding treasure worth a billion dollars. It's better than anything because it means that one day you will get to live forever in the most amazing place, heaven. And being with the most amazing one ever, God. Jam, the immortal jellyfish, reminds us of this. Immortal means to live for anyone, for e forever. Anyone who can has trusted in Jesus alone for eternal life will live forever with God. Okay. So this is Jam, the immortal jellyfish. Jam, the immortal jellyfish, may seem to live forever in the ocean. You can see the eternal life. You can have true eternal life by turning from your sin and trusting in Jesus, who is God with us. God is Emmanuel. And there's more wonderful news. After Jesus died, he rose from the dead and went back to heaven. God promised he would never leave us or forsake us. In fact, God himself lives with every believer in the, in the form of the Holy Spirit. God is Jesus and God the Holy Spirit and God the Father. He is three persons in one. God the Holy Spirit lives with you and acts as a comforter, a helper, and a counselor. Our medallion today is a heart because we want to love God with all our heart. Did you see on the poster where there was the heart and the jellyfish? I can show you again. So in Jam the Immortal Jellyfish, there's a heart right there. So that stands for our medallion today, which is the heart for God, for love, because God loves us. If you want to hear more about how you can become a child of God, or if you have questions about this, Contact the, the church through phone or email, which you can find at yakultcc.org. Or come to a Sunday service and talk to any VBS leader, including me, or find Don Shin. I hope to hear about you and how your journey to becoming a child of God.